having reviewed some of the basic physics that are involved with um, remote sensing, we're now going to move on to discussing images and how we think about them in remote sensing. And we're going to talk about um, just a, a little bit of an introduction and talk about um, photographic and electronic images. We make a distinction between photos and images. Um, so uh, a photo is an analog representation produced by exposing a chemical emulsion or medium, the film, to electromagnetic energy. And this is a, a chemical process that's used to develop those photos. So um, a photo is, um, is limited to a paper or a film product. An image is a, a digital or analog to digital representation produced by exposing some kind of sensor um, to electromagnetic energy. And this could also be a, a scanned photo. After the photo is scanned, we would then call that an image as well. Uh, the differences between photographic imaging and digital imaging. Um, the image structure of a photo is created by um, silver grains or dye spots that, um, at a microscopic level at least, are sort of randomly distributed. A digital image um, that uses a regular grid of picture elements that are all the same size that are called pixels. Image capture, um, incoming radiation is forced um, uh, or focused by a lens onto photographic film. Um, and then differences in radiation levels are represented by differences in the degree of chemical alteration of the silver halide. Uh, crystals on the film. Uh, digital imaging, incoming radiation is focused it onto a, a photosensitive solid state device, so typically either a charge couple device or a CMOS detector array. Um, the more radiation that comes in, the larger an electrical charge that's generated, and then the, generate, the, the generated electrical charges for all the pixels in a sensor are uh, recorded. Multispectral image recording, so this is when you are capturing more than one color. Um, color uh, photographic films have three photosensitive layers with um, um, additional um, non-photosensitive layers between them. Um, and for color film, there are um, the red layer is sensitive to red light, green layer is sensitive to green light, and a blue layer is sensitive to blue light. Um, there's another kind of film called color infrared, and in that case, there's a different assignment of, um, of those colors. So, for instance, the, the layer that will be developed to show in levels of red is actually sensitive to near infrared. We talked about this a bit um, earlier, but, but I'm going to save the rest of it for later. Uh, digital cameras um, use internal filters to determine the spectral band. Um, so um, there are actual filters over individual pixels that make them sensitive to one color or another. Um, image storage, photographic film, um, or prints um, have to be stored in warehouses and there are archives of photos that consist of you know tens of thousands of cans of film um, or you can scan them. Um, digital images you can store them on anything you can store any other kind of file on hard drive, uh, tape drive, etc. Um, image manipulation, you can modify how um, um, the developing, uh, you can adjust developing by, you know, basically changing the amount of time that the film is, uh, um, is in the developing solution. Um, 
With digital image, we can do digital image processing, which is we can apply basic mathematical relationships to modify the brightness of the image um, um, either spectrally, so you can make, um, you can change the contrast of an image, for instance, or spatially, so for instance, you can get rid of uh, noisy pixels that are not of interest to you. Um, we'll have a whole section on digital image processing. Um, image transmission with photos, you know, you got to send them in the mail or FedEx. It's, it's a big pain in the butt if you are working with a lot of photos. Image transmission, again, you can, you know, send it over the internet or you can send it in a hard drive, which is a lot more efficient than sending actual film. Um, film, you're looking at, you know, you're actually looking at the material. Uh, maybe you put it over a light table to get a better um, a view of certain things. Um, uh, computer monitors, digital image projection, that's what we're using with digital images. So more convenient. And that was soft copy display, a hard copy display. You can make prints or you can make transparencies out of photos. Um, you can do the same uh, with digital imaging, but you also have the ability to do um, inkjet, laser, or thermal printers to, to print out your images. So just looking at the difference between uh, photos and images, on the upper left, um, you're, we're zooming in on a, a negative image of a woman shown in the upper left zooming in on her eye and then the iris of her eye and then further and finally when you get down to you know magnification levels d and e you start seeing the individual crystals okay so you can see they're sort of ropey um, whereas if we look at a digital image here we have that flower again now you zoom in you get to the point where you're seeing the variability due to um, individual pixels and so those are square as is the you know the grid of the original sensor um, different types of imaging we can do um, we can use cameras um, we can use scanners which collect image information in a slightly different way we'll talk about that we can use radar um, Non-imaging scanners uh, or non-imaging uh, remote sensing involve things like scanning LIDAR, magnetometers, gravity meters. Um, these um, collect data at a single point and then the location of that point is um, moved back and forth across um, um, moved across the landscape. Um, to pick up um, the measurements of interest um, and make it into what appears to be an image, but actually fundamentally is not an image. So there you go, taking a sample uh, of points. So most of the sensors we use are passive, so energy reflected upon the sensor is from another source. For instance, the sun's electromagnetic energy or uh, emitted thermal energy. Uh, active sensors emit and receive energy um, that it has transmitted. So the sensor emits energy and then receives that reflected energy reflected from a target. And these are LIDAR or radar sensors generally. Um, other sensor characteristics, airborne um, images, airborne platforms offer high spatial and spectral resolution. Um, it allows for rapid prototyping of new instruments, so new kinds of sensors. Generally, you see as an airborne system first for testing, and then they might show up on a, on a satellite. Um, unfortunately, the coverage is low, and large areas can be expensive to acquire. And as we'll see, the geometric st distortion of an airborne image is generally higher than that of a satellite image. 
Phase four sensors provide synoptic overview. So you're looking at a, a much larger area generally. However, it's often less detailed. We'll see that means a, a lower spatial resolution. Um, large areas um, are generally relatively cheap relative to doing an airborne survey. Um, regular collections of data are available. So for instance, Landsat, a very popular sensor program, um, sensors are available every 16 days going back um, to 1973. Um, and they do have these better geometric qualities. 